I'm Kate, I'm a guest designer with Sally Tomato, and I am just delighted to introduce Barbara, a collaborative effort between the Myra Bag Company and Sally Tomato, and we are just so excited to show this new tutorial to you. So I'm ready to get started. I hope you'll join me. This striking bag features sculpted handles with an unadorned front panel to show off exotic fabrics an inset back panel zipper, interior zipper and slip pockets, magnetic closure, decorative tassel and zipper pulls, and adjustable cross body strap. Let's gather and review the supplies you'll need. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. I'm using a faux fur for the main fabric, a faux leather for the contrast, and a linen or quilting cotton for the lining. We're also going to need a fusible woven interfacing, a sew-in foam like Bozal Inner Form, and a heavy stabilizer such as Bozal Craft Tex. Next, gather the hardware. You'll need two half-inch D-rings, two half-inch swivel hooks, two rectangular or donut zipper pulls. You'll also need two single pull zippers. Be sure to check out our website as Sally Tomatoes hardware and zippers coordinate so you'll always have a complete designer look for your project. You can choose from nickel, gold, antique, gunmetal, and rose gold hardware colors. One half inch slider buckle, one three quarter inch magnetic snap, a tassel cap, and one handmade label. Gather a few helpful notions such as sewing clips, pins, chalk, a removable marking pen, basting spray or basting tape or glue, and a zipper or a narrow foot. Refer to your pattern for all the cutting instructions. You may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name or the number of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or a piece of chalk. Sometimes it's difficult to cut the shaped pattern pieces on the fold, especially when using faux leather or faux fur. To make it easier, cut a second paper pattern then tape the two halves together at the printed fold lines, or trace a complete pattern like I'm using. Then trace and cut out the continuous full-size pattern from a single layer of fabric. For the Barbara bag, you'll need front and back panels in main fabric, base, handles, facing, strap, zipper pulls, and tassel pieces in contrast fabric, and then also a front, back, base, and pocket pieces in the lining fabric. Also cut out lightweight interfacing, foam, and heavy stabilizer pieces following your pattern instructions. A quick note about cutting out faux fur fabric. You want to pay attention to the nap, which is the direction the fur lays. For the smoothest feel or look, make sure the fur is smoothest from the top down to the bottom. You'll want to place your pattern with the top of the pattern aligned to the top of the faux fur and the bottom of the pattern at the bottom of the fur nap. Since I'm using faux fur and faux leather for the barber bag, I'm fusing interfacing only to the lining pieces. That would be the lining front and back and the base piece. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing the interfacing to the wrong side of those lining pieces. The front, the back, and the base. While we're at the work table, center the smaller, heavy stabilizer on the wrong side of the contrast base piece. Use basting spray or basting tape to hold the stabilizer in place. The stabilizer is cut smaller than the base, so it doesn't get caught in the seam in a later step. The firmness of the stabilizer will prevent the base of your bag from sagging over time. Insert a top stitching needle into your sewing machine and set the stitch length to 3.5 millimeters. Then thread the machine with a coordinating or contrasting polyester thread color of your choice. Top stitch along the stabilizer base piece one quarter inch from the cut edge. Let's get started by 
shaping the main front and back pieces. Mark the top edge three quarters in from the corners. Draw a line from the top marks to the bottom corners, creating angled sides. Trim away the excess fabric following the marked lines and repeat for the back piece and the two foam panels. Now position the paper pattern for the handles along the top edge of the front panel. Trace along the curved edge of the pattern and then trim away the excess fabric creating a curved top edge on the front panel. Repeat these steps for the back panel and for both foam panels. Place one foam piece on the wrong side of each main front and back pieces, aligning all edges and holding in place with sewing clips. Position the foam base piece over the stabilizer side of the contrast base, aligning all the edges. Secure the layers with basting spray or sewing clips. Next. Baste all four sides of the base, front, and back main pieces with quarter inch allowances. You may find a walking foot or Teflon foot is helpful for sewing the faux leather fabric of the base. Now carefully trim away the excess foam seam allowance close to the stitching without cutting into the stitches. This helps reduce bulk when you begin sewing the bag together. Now we're going to work on the pockets, but first we need to shape the bag lining pieces. Mark the top edge of the front lining piece about 5 8 inch in from the top corners. Draw a line from the top marks to the bottom corners, creating angled sides. Then trim away the excess fabric following the marked lines. Repeat the same steps for the back lining piece. Fold the slip pocket piece in half, right sides together, meeting the shortest edges. Align the top and side edges, then pin or clip the layers together. Sew the sides and bottom edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving a four to five inch opening for turning. Trim the corners to reduce bulk but do not cut through the stitching. Now turn the slip pocket right side out and turn the seam allowance in at the opening to the wrong side or inside of the pocket piece. Give all the edges a press before we go on to the sewing machine. Top stitch along the top fold of the slip pocket with eighth inch allowance before positioning it on the lining. Center the slip pocket one inch up from the bottom edge of one lining piece and pin it in place. Top stitch the sides and bottom edge of the pocket in place with eighth inch allowance. Also top stitch a centered vertical line to divide the pocket. It would be ideal to mark the vertical line with chalk or removable pen before you stitch the pocket in place. Alright, let's set this lining piece aside and begin the next pocket. On the wrong side of the interior zipper pocket piece, mark a horizontal line one inch down from the top short edge. Mark a second horizontal line a half inch below that first line. Now mark a vertical line three quarters inch in from each side. These lines create a zipper placement box. It actually helps if the marked lines extend just a little bit at each corner. With right sides together, center the marked pocket piece on the remaining lining piece two inches down from the top edge of that lining piece. Pin the pocket lining into place. Sew along the zipper placement box. 
When using quilting cottons or linens, try reducing your stitch length to 2.0 to more accurately follow the marked box lines, especially at the corners. Using a seam ripper or a small scissors, or both, carefully cut a horizontal line through the center of the stitched placement box, stopping about a half inch from both box ends. Then cut diagonally toward the stitched corners at each end. Make sure to cut through all the fabric layers, but do not cut through the stitching. Fold the pocket piece through the placement opening to the wrong side of the lining. Take a few minutes to press along the box seam from both sides of the lining to keep a smooth, flat opening. Now on the wrong side of the lining, use double-sided basting tape or glue to hold the zipper in place. Center the zipper right side down over the placement opening. The right side of the zipper should show through the opening on the right side of the lining. I'm using the rectangle zipper pulls, but if you prefer faux leather pulls, follow the pattern instructions to add the decorative faux leather pulls at this time. They are really a fun detail. Lengthen your stitch length to 3.0 or 3.5 millimeters. On the right side of the lining, top stitch an eighth inch from the zipper placement opening. A zipper or narrow foot will help you stitch close and even along the edge of the opening. On the wrong side of the lining, fold the pocket piece right side down, aligning the top and bottom edges. Pin the pocket piece edges together. Move the lining away from the top pinned edge of the pocket. Sew along the top edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Then move the lining away from the pinned sides of the pocket. Sew along each side of the pocket piece, again with a 3 8 seam allowance. Unfold the lining and press a fold along the bottom of the pocket, and if you need to, press any creases smooth. Now we're ready to begin assembling the lining. Align one contrast facing piece to each top edge of the lining pieces right sides together and matching straight edges. Secure the layers with sewing clips. Sew the secured edges with half inch seam allowances. and then fold the lining away from the facing piece. Next, top stitch an eighth inch from the seam along the lining edge. Repeat for the top stitching on the second lining facing seam before we go back to the work table. Now is the time to add the magnetic snap and the label. Be sure to watch the tutorials on our YouTube channel for extra details. Adding the label is optional, but it really gives a professional designer touch. Install the handmade label centered against the right side of the lining about a half inch above the zipper pocket. Now place that heavy stabilizer handle support piece on the wrong side of the facing, aligning the top edges and handle openings. Set the machine's stitching length to 3.5 millimeters 
if it is at a shorter stitch length. Now top stitch along the top edges and handle openings with a quarter inch allowance. Carefully remove the excess stabilizer from the seam allowance. Trim close to the stitching, again without cutting into those stitches. Center the lining base piece on the right side of one lining piece, aligning the bottom edges. Pin in place. And while I'm at the work table, I'm going to position and pin the opposite base edge to the second lining piece. Sew the lining base piece in place with half inch seam allowances, beginning and ending a half inch in from both ends of the base. At the beginning and end of the seam, Cut a vertical line up to the seam, but do not cut through or past those seam stitches. This will allow the fabric to lay flat when you're sewing the boxed bottom in a later step. Meet the lining side edges right sides together. Now hold the layers in place with sewing clips. Sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the top of the facing side edges, changing to a half inch allowance for the remaining length of the facing and lining edge. Repeat that for the second lining side. The wider seam allowances for the lining will help the lining fit neatly inside your bag. Trim the lining seam allowance to about a quarter inch wide. This will reduce bulk and keep the lining smooth when your bag is completed. Press the side seams open. Now with right sides together, match the bottom raw edge of the lining and the short end of the lining base. Pin the layers together at both ends. Sew a half inch allowance along the pinned edges and then trim the half inch seam allowances down to a quarter inch. Also, top stitch along both edges of the facing seams with an eighth inch allowance. This will keep the seam allowances flat. We have one more pocket to tackle, the exterior zipper pocket. On the wrong side of the exterior zipper pocket piece, mark a zipper placement box following the exact same steps we used for the interior zipper pocket earlier in this tutorial. With right sides together, center the marked pocket piece on the main back fabric piece, 8 inches up from the bottom edge. Pin in place or use basting tape if your fabric is going to show the pinholes. Sew along the zipper placement box. Then follow the same steps we used to complete the exterior zipper pocket detailed for the interior zipper pocket with these additional tips. After cutting open the zipper placement box, trim away the excess foam, being really careful to not cut into the stitching. You may also find it helpful to pin the pocket fabric to the foam before positioning and stitching the zipper in place. Just remember to keep the pins away from the stitching area.
Mark a curved line 3 8 inch above the bottom curved edge on the wrong side of both contrast handle pieces. Secure the layers with basting tape or glue. Place the right side of the front and back pieces to the wrong side of the handles, aligning curved raw edges with the marked lines. Top stitch on the right side of the handles, an eighth inch from the bottom curved edges. Draw two vertical lines on each strap connector piece, position two inches in from each curved end. Top stitch on the lines and an eighth inch from the edges between the lines to reinforce the connectors. Thread one strap connector through each D-ring, bringing wrong sides together. Then glue or tape baste the layers together, aligning the curved edges. Place each strap connector a half inch in from the left side edge of each main piece with the fold positioned just below the handle. Top stitch an eighth inch in from the sides and the curved ends of each connector and continue to stitch over the straight reinforcement stitches below the D-ring. Again use a zipper or narrow foot to more easily top stitch near the hardware. Assemble the Barbara bag exterior following the same steps as shown for the lining, this time using a 3 8 inch seam allowance for all the seams. I think we'll fast forward through this part of the video just a little bit and use it as a review. Take a minute to turn the bag exterior right side out. All right, we are now ready to assemble the bag. Slip the lining into the exterior bag wrong sides together, aligning the top raw edges of the handles and the facings. Also match the side seams and the handle openings. Hold the layers together with sewing clips, basting tape or glue, or a combination of those. Use as many sewing clips as you need. As you can see, I'm using quite a few of them. Feel free to take a break so you can start this step refreshed. Top stitch an eighth inch from the top edge. Then top stitch an eighth inch from the handle openings. I actually find it a little easier to stitch around the handle openings with the bag turned wrong side out. The bag is just a little easier to manipulate and it didn't seem to catch as much on the base of my machine. But experiment with your machine and moving the bag around just to get a little more comfortable. And take your time because you want your top stitching to look as neat as possible. Now we're on the home stretch. Join both contrast strap pieces by placing the short ends right sides together, perpendicular to each other, and the ends overlapping. Mark a diagonal line. Sew on the marked diagonal line from corner to corner. Then, 
Trim the excess seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Finger press the seam open and top stitch along each side of the seam with an eighth inch allowance. Fold the strap in half, wrong sides together, aligning the long edges. Hold the raw edges together with sewing clips. Now top stitch an eighth inch from both long edges. Thread one end of the strap over the center bar of the slider buckle. Then fold under about one inch of the strap to its underside. Top stitch the end of the strap to itself. Thread the opposite end of the strap, that's without the buckle, through a swivel hook. Now thread that strap end over the center bar of the slider buckle. To complete the strap, thread remaining end through a second swivel hook and fold about one inch of the strap again to its underside. Top stitch this second strap end to itself. All right, now clip the swivel hooks to the bag and we have just one last designer detail to make, the tassel. Be sure to check out our tutorial for the tassel cap and making the fringe on our website, sallytomato.com. Mark the wrong side of the contrast tassel piece with a horizontal line about a half inch down from the top three inch edge. Draw vertical lines spaced a quarter inch apart or an eighth inch if you prefer finer fringe, leaving the top half inch unmarked. Cut the fringe with a scissors or rotary cutter following the marked vertical lines. Now tightly wrap the fringe on itself, the wrong side to the inside. Add permanent glue to the inside of the tassel cap and insert the rolled fringe. Secure with the setting screw and attach your tassel to a connector D-ring. Your barber bag is finished. I'm so glad you joined us for this tutorial. I'd like to thank you for following along with me, but also I'd like to thank the Myra Bay Company for helping us bring this beautiful pattern to you. So be sure to send photos. We'd love to see how you use the barber pattern and share those photos with us on hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Barbara. So thanks so much and I hope to see you again. Bye.